Yes, yes, yes. It is time for more organic chemistry. More carbon. I made a video on SN2 reactions, and of course, we need to continue with that theme and talk about SN1, right? So once again, talking about nucleophilic substitution. But now we have something else going on. This one here is signifying that the first step is unimolecular, that there was just one molecule falling apart. And for nucleophilic is for substitution. Okay. So let us go through an example. So, the structure of that, we are going to be focusing on the central carbon, where there are methyl groups or atoms. And the reason why you see carbon, central carbons with methyl groups around them undergoing SN1 reactions is that it will stabilize our intermediate. Okay, we're gonna see more about that in a moment. Okay, so here is our 2-chloro-2-methylpropane here. In terms of naming, this video is not focusing on naming, okay? But, of course, I need to, I need to give it a name. <laughs> and that is the, uh, going to look at the reaction of this with water. All right, so water can be a solvent, can also be a nucleophile. We are focusing on its role as a nucleophile here in this example. Ultimately, what we will see is that we get a substitution and I am going to showing this form of it. We are going to talk about the implications of stereochemistry on this, but let me just draw this product in this way. So you can see that this is balanced. We have our chloro group here, and we have water here. And ultimately, one of these hydrogens is going to join up with the chloride product. That's how we get our HCl. And we end up with a hydroxy group that has substituted the chloro. Let's now look at the structure, okay? I drew out the structure here, and now we're going to focus on what is happening in each of the steps. Okay, so here's our overall reaction, but in terms of mechanism, what can happen is that because of the stability of the carbocation, when there are methyl around the central carbon that this can then form this carbocation here. So what we're seeing is that the chloride is leaving. So we have, I'm going to use different pushing. Okay. This bond here. Those 
colors that electron pair associates itself with the chloro group. This is all neutral when we start, but now that that electron pair is with the chloride, we end up with this new Our central carbon. Okay. But it is now a carbocation. And we've got this chloride group that has left. Look at this plus means that it is separate from this. That's not the charge. The charge is there, of course. So look at this. We started out with sp3 hybridized carbon. We have a tetrahedral structure, 109.5 degrees between all these bonds. Okay. But now, by virtue of this chloride leaving, we are left with this carbocation that has sp hybridized hybridization. That means that we have an empty pure p orbital okay, that is on either side of this. This is trigonal planar which means that something can then come in and attack on either side. That's our nucleophile, our water. That can come in on this side. So if it comes in on the side where the leading group left, then we get what's called a retention product. If it comes in on the other side, then it is an inverted product. Okay, that has a lot more to do with the stereochemistry. We are not going to be considering in detail the implications of stereochemistry because we have an achiral carbon in this case, in this example. In this video, we're focusing on the mechanism for SN1 reactions. Now we get this carbocation. Alright, so now what happens? Let's look at our nucleophile. Okay, so we've got our water here. And right now I can just turn it as H2O. And oxygen in water partial negative charge, and it's got lone pairs, okay, so those lone pairs can go and attack that carbocation. So notice how this arrow, this is showing stepwise what's happening, okay. These arrows here that I've drawn here and here, these are the arrow pushing that's showing the lone pairs, in this case attacking, so I'm going to change it and put it in a different color. In this case, we saw this bond being broken as those electrons were then associated with the chloride, so it ultimately formed the chloride here. Okay, but here we now have our nucleophile that's coming in and is attracted to this carbocation. Notice something here. We have a single molecule that's neutral. Start drawing a circle. This is a single molecule that's neutral. And we formed two entities. One is positive, one is negative. When we add up the charges, that is neutral. So we are maintaining a charge balance. We need to make sure that we do that. Okay. All right, so then what happens? Once our water comes in, we now, so I'm gonna draw our thicker arrow again. And now this water can create a bond with the carbocation. 
see that? I'm showing it coming in on this side. So that means you're in H2O. Now, I'm going to pause on putting a charge here because I want to finish up the rest of these bonds, but I want to talk to you about the charge. See how this carbon is now sp3 hybridized again. It was sp3 when it started, formed the carbon cation. When our leaving group left, here it's sp2, and then nucleophile chimera, and now it is sp3 again. 109.5 bond angles. Okay, but notice, remember what I said about the charge balance. This molecule here has a positive charge. And then we have a neutral molecule come in. This is still going to have a positive charge. Okay, so this coming in, you can look at this positive charge that's here. And guess what happens? We have another water I mentioned earlier. Water can be the solvent but also the nucleophile. And when it's a solvent, there's lots of water around. Okay, meaning we can have one water molecule plus a nucleophile and then another water molecule can come in, right? We've got all this drawn here. Oxygen, more electronegative, this positive charge would be more on this hydrogen, okay? And so, that then gives us the glide that's floating around, right? And now we have this hydronium ion for consistency. Circle around that. Okay. Neutral molecule, positive charge here. Okay. And so ultimately, the overall reaction, go back up to the top. If you were wondering, why is that HCl? Well, we had the chloride group that was released in this first step. And we have this hydronium ion, H plus or H3O plus, that was released in this step. Okay, so that gives us HCl. We could have also written this out as H plus, HCl minus, okay, but overall, we put it this way. Here's our balanced chemical reaction. Now, if you might be wondering, why do you have H3O plus there, but here it looks like just H plus? Well, if we had included two water molecules, because two came with the mechanism, then we would have the H3O plus over here. But because water appears on both sides, essentially we can simplify it. Okay, so it still balances and all is well. Okay. 
So once again, I just wanted to remind you that this product here, if we were thinking about stereochemistry, we would have a racemic mixture. in mind with SN1 reactions. I don't see that with SN2, but SN1 by virtue of the formation of this carbocation that allows front side, back side attack that nucleophile. Another thing to think about is sometimes, depending on the identity of the other groups, that might prevent the likelihood, the probability, of the nucleophile coming in on one side versus another. And that can give you a percentage of each enantiomer could be different from 50. do one with them and change the color of this to black because I told you when I'm doing the arrow pushing I want to do a different color do it black okay. all right so this is overview explanation of some of the aspects of SN1 reactions in Please let me know if this was helpful for you. You can do that by liking the video. You can do it by subscribing to my channel. You can also do it by sharing this video or any others to people you know who might benefit from slow, methodical, walking through chemistry, maybe organic chemistry, general chemistry, inorganic chemistry different topics that I cover in this channel. Thank you so much. I love being here with you. I love doing this for you. And this is a small but mighty YouTube channel, and I hope it's helpful for you. Take care. Good luck on your exams, and I will see you next time.